Real people. Real crimes. Real life drama. Brian Brimager was a typical Marine. That kind of an all-American kind of persona. He was assigned to a color guard in Washington, DC. There's pictures of him in the White House with President George W. Bush. From the outside looking in, it seemed like Brian Brimager had everything going for him. In 2011, after having served seven years in the Marine Corps, Brian Brimager leaves the Marines. Uh, he decides to go uh, to Panama. And his plan is to decompress, uh, take some time off. My sister was deeply in love with the man named Brian Brimager. All she wanted was to be with him and love him. They were so madly in love. I think she was very proud of him because he was a Marine. She used to say things like, I'm with a Marine. Yvonne went down to Panama with Brian to start a new life. That's where Yvonne wanted to be. It was perfect. I am Michelle Valenzuela, and my sister is Yvonne Baldelli. She likes to karaoke. She likes to dance. Did Yvonne like it here? She loved it here. Just love it here. Places with cheap beers and happy hour. It's beautiful. She's got the water right in front of her house. Where are we right now? OK, we're on Isla Carenero in uh, Bocas del Toro. This is the, the house that they were uh, renting in, uh, Brian Brimager and Yvonne Valdelli. Yvonne uh, told her family members that everything was good. She painted a very happy picture. Through emails, she made it seem like everything was fine and well. The reality of it was that her and Brimager were fighting constantly. After I'd heard stories of the fights, I could understand why she would want to leave. She fell off the radar screen. She just went away one day. Her email stopped, her communication stopped. Everybody lost contact with her. There's no immigration records that indicates that she left Panama. There's no book for this. There's no book for dummies on what to do when your sister has gone missing. Carinero, from the outside, appears to be a tropical paradise, but it's a swampy hell. I call it Devil's Island because some terrible things took place on that island. Brian Brimager has done nothing, zero, to help with the search for Yvonne. We are in Central America, in some jungle, in some swamp, looking for Yvonne. That through the middle is really deep. This is unbelievable. What no one knew is that Brian Bremminger had a secret. He was living a double life. Brian Bremminger moved to California, hooked up with Kristen Workhoven, and they got married. Kristen worked at the White House, and that's where she and Brian met. And his life is going on like normal, and our life will never be the same. What did you do to her, Brian? We knew that there had been foul play. We knew he was the last one to see her alive. Brian's coming out with his golf clubs. Let's go. Let's go, guys. And this is what I know. OK, you're rolling? Yeah. Let's go. My sister went down to Panama with Brian. Brian returned, and my sister didn't. Brian Brimage was exceptionally arrogant. But what he didn't account for was this family's fervor to find what happened to their daughter and their sister. Brian, Peter Van Sant with CBS News. We'd like to ask a couple questions. It's an easy thing to tell the truth. He told a lot of lies. That's what led to his demise. I'm Peter Van Sant. Tonight on 48 Hours, Devil's Island. Forty-eight hours. We'll be back in ninety seconds.
In the spring of 2012, Brian Bremiger was living the high life in Southern California. Just months removed from a decorated Marine Corps career, Bremiger was happily married and living in the suburbs. When I look at the pictures of Brian and Kristen, I just see a couple in love and, and super sincerely happy and just enjoying the day at the beach in La Jolla. These joyful newlywed photos of Brian and Kristen Bremiger were a shock to Yvonne Baldelli's family. They expected her to be in the picture. It wasn't their wedding day, but they came in their wedding attire in a limousine and champagne flowing. Photographer Jack English had no idea of the intrigue behind these happy images that Brian had proposed to Kristen just days after Yvonne disappeared in Panama. She looked very happy, very in love, as if she found her Prince Charming. Prince Charming? A man who had just left Yvonne Baldelli in Panama two weeks earlier? How could this happen? We traveled to the remote islands off the Caribbean coast of Panama to find out. Up ahead is the island of Carinero, where Yvonne and Brian, who the locals called Brim, came to live in September 2011. It's a place where they could chase their dream. Why did they decide to go to Panama? She liked the fact that they could live on the beach, you know, pretty, pretty reasonably priced down there. Yvonne's sister, Michelle Valenzuela, says Brian wanted to become a singer, performing in bars and clubs. With her beloved dog, Georgia May, in hand, Yvonne brought two sewing machines in hopes of starting a clothing business. Stepmother, Lillian Faust. She was going to make bathing suits and sell them to tourists. I knew she was excited, and she, she didn't have any reservations. It sounded like she had a real plan for the future. She did, and she thought that she found her paradise, her perfect place. Michelle recalls how her younger sister, Yvonne, recently divorced, was smitten with Brian when they first started dating in 2009 in Southern California. I didn't think she was physically attracted to him. That was a big part of it. And while Yvonne seemed to be falling in love with Brian, big sister Michelle wasn't so sure. As far as emotionally for my sister, Yvonne would put 100% into you, and she would expect that back. And I didn't get that impression that she was receiving that. That concerned me. She deserved that. After Yvonne was laid off from her management job with Procter & Gamble and Brian ended his career in the Marines, the two decided to make a fresh start and reinvent themselves in Panama, settling in this house. They quickly fell in with the local expats. Did you think they were in love? Apparently. Yeah. Seems so. Joan and Stephen Crabtree own the Cosmic Crab, a funky resort and waterfront bar where Brian would sing for his supper. He played here at the Cosmic Crab um, a couple of nights a week, and they were frequent visitors here. They were very nice people. Penny Tom, owner of another waterfront bar, also let Brian play for food and free booze. Lots of booze. They used to drink a lot, so they were always happy. What's a lot? A lot. <laughs> and Jim Merton says Brian's drinking may have gotten in the way of his singing. He played the guitar good, but when he started to sing, that's when it went away. What was it like? Mm, like a hound dog on a porch. She looked very happy in the pictures, and she was really enjoying herself there, and I, I knew it would be a place that she would like. For Yvonne's father, Jim Faust, the constant stream of joyful phone calls and emails describing the couple's Panama adventures was reassuring. Yvonne's emails were stories of exactly what her life was like down there, and I could picture it, and I could close my eyes, and it, it was like I was there. I couldn't imagine the whole thing. Emails like this one. She says, hi, sis. Brian, already working at local restaurants and bars. We love it. We wake up and go running, then swim in the ocean every morning. And so Yvonne's family thought all was well in paradise and that Brian might be the one for Yvonne. I believed that they were going to get married. That's what I thought was going to happen when they got down there. But then, 
Right around Thanksgiving 2011, three months after they arrived in Panama, the happy emails and calls from Yvonne started to drop off. For Michelle, a sisterly instinct started to kick in. That's what set me off, was the fact that um, they were coming less frequent, the emails from her, and then they stopped completely. Two weeks passed. Then, on December 14th, Michelle finally got a text, but it wasn't from Yvonne. There was a number I didn't recognize, and a text message on there said, this is Brian, may I make arrangements to pick up my truck? Michelle was shocked. Brian was back in the U.S.? I sat up, called that number. For only thing out of my office, where's my sister? He says, didn't you get my email? I said, I haven't received any emails from anybody. It's been a few weeks. I said, I'll call you back. So I went to my computer. Michelle discovered an email she had overlooked. It was from Brian, who had never written before. The one from him stated, I'm sure you've heard by now that Bonnie and I are no longer together. I called him right back. So I asked him, point blank, what happened? And he said they had got in a fight because she had found out that he had a child from somebody else. That somebody else, Kristen Workhoven. The two had a baby girl in 2010. Since Yvonne was unable to have a child because of a medical condition, the discovery must have been earth shattering. Brian then said Yvonne just up and left. I said, did she leave a note? No. Has she tried to call you since? No. Do you know where she's at? No. And I said, I haven't heard from her, Brian. And he said, well, I'm sure she's fine. But Michelle had her doubts about that story. And 10 days later, when Brian called and still wanted to pick up his truck, Michelle said she had another plan. I said, when you come to pick up the truck, I'll be here. That's no problem. And I think it's a good idea that you go with me to the police department since you're the last one to see her and we can fill out a missing persons report. Because now we're already the mid-December and I haven't heard anything from her. And that's not right. Something's wrong. In December of 2011, Michelle Valenzuela was still worried about her missing sister. So she went back to her computer where she found another overlooked message. This one from Yvonne. Hi sis, just an update. Brian and I are no longer together. I should have trusted my instincts that he is a lying, cheating ass I'm headed to Costa Rica with a man I met when we first got to Bocas. What did you think when you read this email? I just wasn't sure. There's some things in there that didn't feel right to me. Her head was spinning. Could Yvonne really have run off with another man after learning that Brian had a love child? All Yvonne ever wanted to do was be a mother. That's all she ever wanted to do was be a mother. And to find out that Brian had a child and, you know, she sold everything she had to go to the other ends of the world to be with his man, and he didn't tell her about that. I'm questioning what her mental state is right now. She's heartbroken. In upstate New York, Jim and Lillian Faust also felt the turn of events was just so out of character for their daughter. For her life to change so abruptly, and she's like, oh, well, I'm going with this guy. And to Costa Rica. To Costa Rica. <laughs> that made absolutely, positively no sense to me. Also making no sense, three weeks had passed since Yvonne had emailed from Panama. But then, out of the blue, she sent a new email. It was strange. Miss you and everyone at home. I'm starting to get a little homesick. I'm working on plans to get home as early as the second week of January. I've been living with cliffhangers for a while. Love you, sis, Yvonne. While strange, the email was also reassuring for her family, who was happy to learn Yvonne would soon return to California. So I stopped worrying. I figured, OK, she knows that in January we're having a family get together. She's going to be there. Do you feel she's safe at this, at this point? I was still worried, but I was satisfied with it for the moment. On the same day that email arrived, so too did Brian Brimminger, knocking on the front door of Michelle's L.A. home to pick up his truck. What did you see on his face? What was his demeanor like? He was just in a hurry. He was calm. It was very brief. All business? Yes. Get his stuff, get his truck. And leave. After Brian got his pickup truck, 
Yvonne's emails stopped. 16 long days passed until on January 6, 2012, Michelle wrote her sister, the subject, worried. I just want to make sure you weren't kidnapped or someone pretending to be you. Ha ha. There's my paranoid, suspicious mind, or maybe too many 48 hours. Did you ever hear back from your sister again? No. That's the last email. Michelle was still hopeful that she would appear at that family reunion, but Yvonne never showed up. Well, at that point, when we met up with my dad and I told him we haven't heard from her, he said, oh, no, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And I told my dad, she did not leave Panama. That's just my feeling. By now, Michelle was convinced her sister never ran off to Costa Rica with another man. So her instinct was to learn where Yvonne's emails were really coming from. So I went to my cousin and asked him to please check it out, because like I said, I haven't, had, I haven't got a clue. The cousin, a technology whiz, said tracking Yvonne's emails would be easy. All he needed was their IP addresses. So he searched the emails Yvonne had supposedly sent from Panama and Costa Rica, as well as that email Brian had sent from near Dana Point, California. The cousin made a startling discovery. The ones from Panama came from Panama. And then the one that was supposed to be with her being in Costa Rica came from the United States. Where in the United States? One of them looked like they were coming from Dana Point. That email, Michelle says, originated from where Brian was now living near Dana Point, California. It was the evidence Michelle had been looking for. He was sharing the same IP address. So Yvonne's email is coming from Brian's computer. Yes. The family's worst fear had come true. It appeared Brian had hacked into Yvonne's email account and was impersonating her. But why? That's when I knew that he did something to her. And it's not missing person. It's murder now. It's murder. I said, my sister's dead, and I'm never going to see her again. But Michelle had no time to mourn. She took that new evidence down to the FBI, where she met with special agent Andrew Masters. Michelle Valenzuela, she was a spitfire. When they brought that to us, we knew that there was absolutely foul play involved. The FBI immediately launched an investigation into Yvonne's disappearance, with Masters taking charge. Yvonne's family then contacted the State Department. I call the embassy, and the embassy tells us there is no record of her ever leaving Panama and no record of her ever entering Costa Rica. Yvonne's family couldn't wait any longer. They traveled to Panama to find answers. The FBI made a move as well, targeting Brian Brimager as a person of interest. Brian didn't realize what exactly the FBI is capable of. With the FBI investigation underway in the States, Yvonne's family met up with legendary investigator Don Winner in Panama City. Why is it when something goes bad with an American citizen in Panama, you get the phone call? I've already put away, or helped to put away, three serial killers. So when bad things happen, they know that to come to me when, when they don't know what else to do. Winner is an ex-U.S. intelligence officer with an uncanny ability to solve murders. Jim and Lillian tell Don the story of their daughter's disappearance and Brian's claim that she's run off with another man. I think the chances that she's running around in Costa Rica somewhere with some other dude are damn near zero. Here's the deal. This is what happened. This is what we think is going on. It's not the first time Winner, a CBS News consultant, has worked on a case with 48 hours. All right, we're going to go take a look at this uh, yellow trimaran. The intrepid investigator helped solve the murder of American sailor Don North, as 48 hours reported in 2011. Just on a personal side of, in all of this, can you believe you and I are doing this again? No, absolutely not. I tell you what, uh, it's, 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 it's amazing. Winner is convinced Brian Breminger is involved. His strategy, 
put pressure on the Panamanian government to act. When Don Winner speaks... The people listen, listen. yeah. Winner's game plan also called for Jim and Michelle to give blood for DNA tests should any remains be found. And when Yvonne's family travels hundreds of miles from Panama City to the tropical island where she disappeared, Yvonne Lee Valdelli. The Panamanian police are persuaded to hold a press conference to plead for information. The family has been experiencing a living nightmare for quite a few months, and we continue to appeal to anyone who knows absolutely anything about Yvonne's disappearance to come forward. Panamanian police announce for the first time that Yvonne is the victim of foul play and name Brian Brimager as the suspect. Todos adoramos a Yvonne. This news conference reverberated around the world. Police say within weeks of her disappearance, Brimager returned to the U.S., got engaged and married another woman. Tonight, the FBI is calling him a person of interest. Riding the momentum of the press conference, they printed flyers, fanned out to neighborhoods, and the village, searching for their own clues. It's a bittersweet search for Yvonne's niece, Lauren Beyer, in a place that is no longer a paradise. There's nothing here for us until we find her. That's why we're here. But the family's quest is starting to get results. Witnesses who knew the couple come out of the woodwork, describing Brian's verbal and physical abuse. To me, he was a scary person. He was uh, not the kind of person I wanted to be around. Local bar owner Jeff Salzman saw it firsthand on Yvonne's face. As I recall, it was black eyes and, and blackness around the face and, and bruises. Was she self-conscious about it? She was trying to hide it and, and not speak of it. It was very painful to learn that he had hit her that she had bruises, that she had black eyes. Those things were very difficult to learn. The realization that Yvonne may have been murdered is setting in. Where could Yvonne's body have been dumped? Well, just feet in front of that house, you've got thousands of square miles of water. Well, if you just go not 20 yards from the shoreline, this impenetrable swamp. Try to find something in there. But that's exactly what Yvonne's family, investigators, and volunteers set out to do. Entering what could be Yvonne's swampy graveyard. Describe this area that has to be searched. Just how difficult a place is it? OK, it's jungle. It's tropical. So you have every kind of bug and critter that you can think of, spiders and snakes. And you know, it's not a place to go slogging around through. Struggling through the muck, the spiders, and the rancid water, the smallest discovery raises hope. A purse, a medicine bottle, a mysterious sinkhole. I kept asking myself, I want to find Yvonne, but do I want to find Yvonne? I mean, I want to know where she is, but do I want to see her in these swampy areas? Then they find a passport. You know, we find a US passport, uh, the front page here. We even know them. None of it is Yvonne's. But back in the United States, the FBI confronted Brian Brimager. We went and uh, knocked on his door. He answered and invited us in, said that he was expecting us. FBI Special Agent Andrew Masters questioned Brian Brimager for more than four hours while he babysat his young daughter. This is Special Agent Andrew Masters along with Special Agent Gabriel Ramirez approaching apartment M in an attempt to have a consensual monitored interview with Brian Bremager. 
We weren't sure if he was going to break down and confess to having a part in her disappearance and murder, or if he was going to become angry, or if he was going to kick us out. Brian stuck to his story. Yvonne left him for another man. I come back home, and there was a note that said, and I quote, <laughs> um, going to Costa Rica with a man I've been talking to, um, F -U -F. But when confronted with Michelle's email evidence, Brian began to stumble. Brian, I'm just going to kind of lay it out there, man. Um, the IP addresses are not coming back from Costa Rica or Panama. OK. They're coming back from here. OK, from so here? Mm -hmm. okay. So if she's not hanging out around here, then somebody sent those emails, right? How did those emails get sent? Do you know anybody that would have her email account, hat vendor her account? No. Then something caught Master's eye. As soon as I walk in, I see a uh, white Sony Vio, which is a computer, a laptop computer, exactly. And we knew that Yvonne owned a white Sony Vio laptop that she had taken with her to Panama. Well, what are you thinking? I'm thinking we may very well have Yvonne's computer right here. Master's hunch was spot on. It was Yvonne's computer. But why was it in Brian's condo? And would it help unravel the mystery of Yvonne's disappearance. Take the journey with Yvonne's family as they search the jungles of Panama, now at 48hours.com. Even though he was under the FBI's microscope, Brian Bremiger remained a free man, living with his family on the outskirts of San Diego. Kristen worked for a defense contractor, while Brian, unemployed, spent much of his time golfing. Recognize that man? Yes, I do. That's Brian. In the summer of 2012, we showed Yvonne's sister Michelle video of Brian's new life. What goes through your mind when you see him? Well, honestly, it's not surprising now that I know what he's capable of. He thinks he got away with murder. So what you have here is a person who killed my sister and can walk away scot-free. You ready? Brian, come out with this golf club. Let's go, guys. Okay, roll. Just a few months after that FBI interview, we came face to face with the suspected killer. Brian, Peter Van Sant with CBS News. We'd like to ask a couple questions. Would you please talk to us? Did you murder Yvonne Baldelli? You can speak to us. You can answer that question. Brian, why, why won't you speak with us? Did you have anything to do with her disappearance? While Brian heads off to enjoy another carefree day on the greens, the FBI was turning his life upside down, interviewing everyone he knew, including his wife, Kristen. What had Brian told her about why he was living in Panama? Uh, he told Kristen that he is going down to Panama to decompress from uh, after leaving the Marine Corps and that he was going with some Marine Corps friends. Did Kristen urge Brian to leave Yvonne? No, Kristen didn't even know Yvonne had existed. So he lied to Kristen? Absolutely. Apparently, all those lies didn't matter to Kristen. According to her, Brian is the greatest thing to ever happen to anybody. But that's something she didn't want to share with us when 48 Hours knocked on her door. Hi, Kristen. Kristen, I'm Ryan with CBS News. Is there any way we can talk? Meanwhile, as Special Agent Masters took several investigative trips to Panama, a different portrait of Brian Bremiger emerged. We talked to uh, many people that uh, would socialize with him at bars, uh, and we learned about all the uh, domestic violence uh, that, uh, that he brought upon her, uh, the choking, the, the, the dragging, uh, the berating. After speaking with friends and neighbors of Yvonne and Brian, Special Agent Masters became certain the couple had a violent fight on November 26, 2011. 
after Yvonne learned that Brian had fathered a child with Kristen. The argument probably escalated, and at some point, Brian decided he was done with her and he was going to kill her. Crucial evidence was also discovered on Yvonne's laptop, the very computer Master saw when he first questioned Brian. About two weeks before her murder, Yvonne took this disturbing selfie. That photo shows a massive black eye on her left eye and swelling in her left cheek. In a way, from the grave, Yvonne helped you in this investigation. Yvonne helped us tell the story, yes, absolutely. And there was more chilling evidence. We found the Yahoo searches in which he searches how to uh, remove blood from a mattress. When uh, did he do that? He did that about 10.30 in the morning, the night after Yvonne was murdered. Masters discovered even more evidence in Costa Rica, where Brian is seen withdrawing cash from Yvonne's account. We were able to obtain those ATM photos. So we have Brian using the Yvonne's debit card to extract money from her account. And Masters says there is no doubt that Brian used Yvonne's laptop to send those emails to her family. So we went looking for Brian Bremiger again to get answers. Hey, Brian, I need to talk to you. How do you explain the fact that Yvonne's email that said she was in Costa Rica, that she sent to people, was actually sent by you from here in California? Can you answer that? You knew she was dead when you sent that email, didn't you? Brian, we really want you to talk to us, answer some questions. He's never said a word, never said a word to us. He will not answer any questions. And what about Yvonne's dog, Georgia May, which had not been seen since she disappeared? Don Winner has a theory. He knew that she loved that dog and that if the dog was running around, he knew that anything she said about her taking off with some guy to Costa Rica, everybody would immediately know it was crap. So he had to get rid of the dog too. In his investigation, Don Winner unwittingly found a key piece of evidence on Brian's Facebook page, where he had sold this machete. After Yvonne disappeared, Reminger uh, made a comment about that knife. He's like, yeah, that used to be mine. I brought it down with me when I came down from the States. And the chilling part is he made a comment that said, I've only used it to chop up one stripper. That's just chilling. Special Agent Andrew Masters needs to get his hands on the machete to see if it was used in Yvonne's murder. Incredibly, he was able to track down the person who bought it from Brian in Panama. This is the machete that Brian bought in the United States and took down with him uh, to Panama. Can you pick it up for me? Sure. It's very heavy, uh, it's, it's weighted, and uh, it would inflict a lot of damage. Investigators had the machete, they had the email, and they had caught Brian in multiple lies. Soon, someone would stumble upon the most important evidence of all. Don Winner shares some of the details of his investigation, now at 48hours.com. We seek answers, justice, and help. Summer 2013. Nearly two years have passed since Yvonne Baldelli's disappearance. You feel like you're reading a book, a terrible mystery or murder mystery, and there's no end to it. On June 26, 2013, the final chapter of this mystery began to unfold. A former Marine who family members say murdered his girlfriend before FBI Special Agent Andrew Masters slapped the cuffs on Brian Bremiger. What did you say to him? You're under arrest. He said, turn around, put your hands behind your back. He needed the answer for his crime. How did you learn that Brian had been arrested? Truth be told, I received a text from my dad said they got the SOB. And I sat down in a sense of relief because now they believed us. Brian Bremiger was charged with 13 felonies relating to the cover-up of Yvonne's death, but not murder. 
Assistant U.S. Attorneys Shane Harrigan and Mark Conover were lead prosecutors. At that point, without having found the body, we didn't have quite enough to bring the murder charge. But that would soon change. Human remains have been found on a Panamanian island. A local worker clearing some the brush on the island where Brian and Yvonne lived came upon this duffel bag. And when he unbuckled the clasp, he found Yvonne's uh, skeletonized remains. By the time she was found two years later, she it was uh, only bones. A DNA test confirmed it was Yvonne. Her remains were found just a few hundred yards from where the family had spent days searching. I wanted to tell Michelle personally. When I first heard the possibility that they found Yvonne, my first reaction was, for me, it's good news because I just feel good. We can nail this bastard. While the family's prayers had been answered, an autopsy confirmed the hellish fact that Yvonne had been dismembered. This is the actual device that was used to dismember Yvonne. The most likely cause of death was being stabbed in the back at least twice. Despite overwhelming evidence and proof that Bremiger had repeatedly lied, his wife Kristen continued to stand by him. Kristen, may I ask, do you still believe in your husband's innocence? Can you just tell us that? Don't touch the camera. Then, for Yvonne's family, another cruel tragedy struck in the spring of 2014. Michelle, who had dedicated her life to finding justice for her sister, now faced another deadly enemy. She was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer. I'm still alive to fight for my life, and I'm still alive to fight for my sister. This was Michelle in June of 2014. And this was her just three months later. Today, uh, we're going, I'm going to be giving a deposition. Weakened by cancer and given just weeks to live, you saw me swear for Michelle, a crucial witness, agreed to tell her story while she still could. Brian Bremiger would sit directly across from her. I'm going to try to ignore him as best I can. And who is Brian Bremiger? The defendant. Do you see him in the courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Would you please point to him and describe where he is seated for the record? He's sitting at the end, khaki outfit, the end. Michelle passed out after the exhausting testimony. It was a courageous act of love for her sister. This might be the last thing I get to do for her over and over and over again, because it'll be on camera forever. Days later, she died. It took years of diplomatic and legal wrangling, but in early 2015, the government of Panama finally agreed to let Brian be tried for murder on American soil. We came to the conclusion that the only way that Brian Brimager would face justice for his murderous act is if he was charged and convicted here in the United States. Brian pleaded not guilty. The case was heading for trial in 2016 when investigators made another dramatic discovery. Yvonne's blood and DNA were found under the machete's handle. So these three screws were undone. Mm -hmm. The handle opens up, and right. inside they find blood. Right, they removed these three and just pulled it out here and conducted the testing on the blade and the inferior portion of the handle and uh, found blood. Whose blood? Yvonne's. Yvonne Baldelli. Yvonne Baldelli. This now is a slam dunk. You know that this is the tool used to dismember her. It was that that made Brian finally realize he was not going to get out of the. He was not going to lie his way out. It's over. It's done. He had cleaned the blade but he hadn't cleaned underneath the handle. And it was that additional evidence that I believe eventually led Mr. Brimager to plead guilty. Within a week, Brimager pleaded guilty to second-degree murder, while the other charges were dropped. 
and later at his sentencing, finally admitted after nearly five years of lies to killing Yvonne Baldelli. And I think if you look up in the dictionary, evil, and you see Brian's picture in there, he's the ultimate carnet of evil in my mind. In open court, Brimager apologized to Yvonne's family, but his words rang hollow. Brian Brimager is a con artist. He had our daughter conned. He had his new wife conned. He had her family conned. He was able to live a double life, sometimes a triple life, and people buy what he says. But his actions show that he's not the person he says that he is. Brian was sentenced to 26 years in federal prison. With the case over, Yvonne's remains were returned to her family. And laid to rest at sea. To get her remains back and be able to give her a dignified resting place, I can sleep better at night knowing that she's not rotting in some jungle or deep in the ocean somewhere, knowing that she loved the ocean, knowing that we were able to put her in a place that she loved. We brought her home, and I know that that was thanks to a lot of work of a lot of unsung heroes. I know. In a way, two people were honored this day, Yvonne and her beloved sister, Michelle, who battled a Marine to the end and won. She's definitely a hero. She never gave up. To her dying day, she gave all she had. Kristen and Brian Brimager are still married. She continues to support and visit him in federal prison. Brimager's prison term ends in February 2037. Help us solve this crime. It was a savage murder. A stunning model. She was quite the trophy. <laughs> married to a multimillionaire. This is where the assailant got her from behind, knocked her to the ground. They slit her throat. Eight years, no arrest. And there are no fingerprints. No, nothing at all. There are clues. The sketch. Who is this? Is this the guy that murdered my sister? The letter. And now that was a shock. Cut out in little bitty individual, different letters. I mean, why are you talking to me? I want to find out who murdered my sister. CBSN, CBS News, always on.